and we're recording. Hi, Facebook friends. Believe it or not, I am live today recording for you with Dr. Russ Jaffe. I am so excited to be on camera with you. I've been sharing your live videos for the last few weeks, but today we actually get to talk kind of face to face thanks to technology. So thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time today. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Absolutely. So I'm going to start off with um, asking Dr. Jaffe to share with us, how did you even come to this side of healthcare, if you will? Very good question, because I started in academic medicine at Boston University. I did internal medicine training, and I was really interested in the research side of clinical medicine. Uh, I matriculated to the public health service and was given an officership at the National Institutes of Health, where I did residency in clinical pathology. And each of the years that I was at the National Institutes of Health, we introduced a fundamental new method that was safer, more reliable, more effective for some aspect of medicine. Uh, the first was uh, a early colon cancer screening test that's not inhibited by ascorbate vitamin C. Uh, then we did more sensitive kidney function tests. Then we did tests of how platelets are activated by collagen and the role that that plays in atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries and coronary disease. And I thought I would spend my career in academic medicine as long as they would let me. And then along the way, I heard that there were people such as Queen Wu in Washington, D.C., who with acupuncture needles could get results in certain cases that we at NIH could not achieve. And I went as a skeptic to debunk him and ended up with a seven-year apprenticeship in his clinic. I also went to debunk the, the author of the textbook of yoga psychology, an MD, PhD named Ramamurti Mishra. I ended up as his student, and then he became my patient. And I've had the rare good fortune of finding people who revealed to me how little I knew about an important aspect of life and health, were eager to share with me what they knew that I didn't, that complemented what I knew. They didn't want me to replace what I knew. They just had something more to add. And in several cases, I had the rare good fortune of them becoming their personal physician, which of course changes the entire dynamic, because now I'm supposed to know what they need, not what they want. So I came as a skeptic, and I'm glad that I was able to bring with me a certain amount of intellectual and, and scientific training and background, because I think there's an urgent need for those of us who look at whole people and whole systems in nature and biology to rediscover physiology first as an opportunity to evoke healing responses and remove obstacles to recovery. Absolutely. And this journey led you to the creation of ELISA Act Biotechnologies, correct? Well, yes, indeed. So I had established my career in terms of making cellular responses understandable by clinicians and meaningful in science. And that started with blood clotting, what's called coagulation. But what I learned about having specimens that are unactivated and undamaged when they get to your laboratory was exactly what we needed when we started on the quest for, quote, the complete functional immune adaptive response test, what we now call the LRA by ELISA Act, the lymphocyte response assay done by a combination of amplified ELISA and cell culture. And it is unique to us to be able to do them at the same time. So we had to develop a novel dish or a novel microtiter plate in which we could do a concurrent cell culture and also an amplified procedure. We purify all of our own antigens because what you have commercially is not up to our standards, and I am a protein biochemist, so I can't get away by saying I don't know what's better from schmutzy. Um, and so there's lots of little details of technology that all came together in the first ex vivo lymphocyte response assay, the first time we could functionally measure delayed responses from all kinds in one mixed cell system, which gives us a whole new tool to understand immune defense and repair mechanisms. So let's break that down for practitioners. So those are the things that make ELISA Act Biotechnologies or the LRA Bio ELISA Act test different than the other food and chemical sensitivity tests that are available because you're looking directly at the lymphocytes response, correct? Exactly. After after the incubation period, 
Tell me why it's a three hour incubation period before you observe those lymphocytes. Well, yes, and, 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 and then we'll get into what's really unique and different from all other kinds of testing. The reason we have a brief three hour incubation period is because when you bring the specimen back up to body temperature and you expose the different dishes or wells in the microtiter plate, each of which has a different antigen, that antigen has to get processed by an APC, an antigen presenting cell. And that antigen presenting cell then wiggles over to the lymphocyte and presents it to the lymphocyte. That process takes about an hour. Then the cell turns on. And if you wait three weeks, you'd get a colony of cells. If you waited three days, you could see incorporation of thymidine by isotopic technique. Or in a few hours, you can see the glycocalyx light up. You see a kinase reaction that we figured out and patented many years ago. And so we found the tool with the technique. So we had the technique of ex vivo specimens, and then we applied that to a functional cell culture so that we could learn what others do not test. So every other test is one or another form of physical chemistry. You're either measuring an antibody without any functional information about whether it's helpful or harmful. You're missing T cell reactions because they react without antibodies you're probably missing immune complexes because they require a cell culture to see their activation. And we functionally provide the information that's lacking in all other procedures, and we do it with such reproducibility, less than 3% variance on consecutive blind specimens, that we're as accurate as any test, any, any test of any kind, let alone a cell culture. Right. Do you offer other tests at ELISA Act? Are there other tests available that docs can order and order everything all at one time? Yes, indeed. Now, the first three decades that our lab was servicing uh, clinicians and, and, and people in need, we concentrated on expanding the repertoire of being able to test the largest number of substances in the most precise and pure uh, environments. And then we realized that in addition to looking at immune tolerance and intolerance, it would be really neat if laboratory medicine could take the next step in personalized care and look at what we call epigenetics or lifestyle. And so some years ago at the Health Studies Collegium, we put together a working group and we looked at all the possible tests and we wanted to know what would be the suite of tests, what would be the group of tests that would measure lifestyle and epigenetics in a way that we could take action on today, but also in a way that would inform us about 10 plus year quality of life going forward. So it turns out there are eight tests, just eight out of many, many thousands, that cover all of epigenetics and lifestyle. And we offer these um, with an interpretation that's, again, distinctive to us, an interpretation that says, you don't want to make statistics out of people, and you don't want to make people in statistics, so forget about the usual lab range. That's all about math and statistics. I used to teach statistics to doctors. I can talk about it, but it's embarrassing because what, as a clinician, what I want to know is what is the meaning of this test for this individual, and if they're at their best value for that test, I want to celebrate with them. And if they're not at their best value, if their risk has gone up because they're not at their best outcome goal value, then I want to guide them back to the goal value based on their biochemical individuality. And it is really true that we're as distinct as our face and our fingerprints, some of us need more antioxidants, other of us need more minerals, other of us need certain special cofactors. But with the help of predictive biomarkers interpreted to best outcome goal values, we can now make biochemical individuality not a concept and a principle, but an actual practice day by day, person by person. Absolutely. Individualized, that's a concept, right? Dr. Jaffe, can you tell us what exactly does predictive biomarkers mean? Well, this is, yes, this is a concept that we can explain. First of all, what's a biomarker? A biomarker is any test that is physiology. Okay? So there's lots of tests like of minerals and rocks as they come out of the ground. That's different. Biomarkers are tests in biology. They're tests within physiology. But predictive biomarkers is a very small subset. These are the tests where we have had the tests done long enough on every geographic, socioeconomic, and ethnic group, so we know the values 
that can give us information about 10 plus years survival in relation to your value for that test. So for example, if you have a hemoglobin A1C, which is one of the eight predictive biomarkers, you have a hemoglobin A1C of less than 5%, you have a more than 99% chance of living 10 plus years, whether you're 9, 19, or 90. Now, there are not many 90-year-olds who still have a healthy hemoglobin A1C. We could get into that. But the point is that the best outcome goal value is what we now use for these predictive biomarkers, both because it gives us actionable information to change lifestyle today and because it's been done so widely and for so long on such large numbers of people that we actually can look at it for the long-term, what's called morbidity and mortality risk, but more importantly for the short term, what do I eat, what do I do, what do I think, how do I move tomorrow? And we have enough experience over these decades uh, to guide such lifestyle programs and to really make biochemical individuality accessible rather than just a vaunted concept. Absolutely. Dr. Jaffe, would you be willing to share um, a story of inspiration and information with our viewing audience, someone that has experienced the results of the LRA BioLiza Act test and how it changed their life? Uh, several come to mind. I'm going to very quickly offer up several. One was a dear friend of a friend. She was in a wheelchair because of multiple sclerosis. She did our program, and six months later, she did it again. Six months later, she did it again. After 24 months, this was two years, she sent me a postcard of her rock climbing. She was not only in remission and out of the wheelchair, she sent me a picture from Zion where she was literally rock climbing. Um, we have people who have had migraine headaches for decades, only to find out that what Dr. Egger showed many years ago and what we have reconfirmed is that it's mostly delayed food allergy. And when you manage the delayed food allergies, you can see what, if anything, is needed biochemically or metabolically uh, so that they can uh, be free of migraines after years of suffering. Um, another case that comes to mind are people who suffer with autoimmune diabetes or autoimmune thyroid disorders or autoimmune adrenal disorders or autoimmune intestinal disorders, ulcerative colitis and the like. Any of the autoimmune conditions, I could tell you from now till midnight, uh, a case after case where we were able to find a specific combination of things to substitute and a specific combination of things to do that made all the difference in the world uh, by sustainable remission in people who had not been in remission for many, many years and had been through quite the mill. Uh, because in the first studies that we did, um, the lymphocyte response assay was not yet recognized as first-line comprehensive care the way it is today. So we often started with the most uh, challenging cases uh, where people were bereft, helpless, and hopeless after years of suffering. Uh, and we did exceptionally well there. And then most of our colleagues recognized that, oh gosh, this is where I should start. This is not what I would do when everything else fails. This is really the beginning point of biological and personalized medicine through predictive biomarkers and especially the lymphocyte response assay so that we really can feel and function well in this challenging 21st century. And it really, as, as you put in your book, the, the Alcohol My Guidebook, it's not just what we're eating. It's what we drink. It's what we think. It's our daily activities and our daily lives and our meditation practices and grounding practices and such. It's everything. That's where... It is, it is indeed. It is everything. And um, I am a big fan of falling back in love or re-enchantment with everyday life. Um, as you know, I choose to live in a place where there's lots of nature and nurture where I sit and watch the birds, you know, uh, uh, eat uh, little seeds and the pollinators come back and forth in our biodynamic food forest in our front yard. Uh, for me, this is part of nurturing my soul as well as helping me physically because we all need to walk at least 10 to 15,000 steps a day. That means 45 minutes to an hour. You can do that once or in different parts. But most of us, myself included, tend to be too sedentary, and we pay a price for that. And yes, you can worry yourself sick, what a shock, or you can think yourself well, what an opportunity. And it's not as simple as, oh, every day in every way I'm better and better. No, dear, that's not sufficient. But we do have tools that others have succeeded with. Many of these uh, have a venerable history going back into many different traditions, but they've been revalidated 
by people like Herb Benson showing that the relaxation response is particularly helpful for people at cardiovascular risk. Uh, and other work uh, on mindfulness practices that has shown after a period of time, your brain actually does change. Uh, Matthew Ricard, who some consider the, help, the happiest man on earth, uh, was the first man in Dr. Richie Davidson's uh, functional MRI machine. And he was in there for eight hours, and they feel that they showed that his brain had changed because of all his mindfulness and meditative practice. And when he came out, his first comment was, ah, you gave me a mini retreat. Now, these machines are very loud and they're very tight. They're not made for ambiance. You normally don't stay in there that long. His point of view kept him in good cheer despite what was going on. So we can modify our points of view to be helpful, or we can inherit from our forebears the stresses that got them that can get us. And I'm from a family where <laughs> if you're not under stress, we don't think you're part of the family. And if you're not talking very loud, we don't listen to you at all. <laughs> so I have absolutely changed because the people around me said, you know, you're much easier to get along with when you speak quietly. <laughs> and I, I, I am a living example that you can, with motivation and encouragement from people who like you or love you, you can change. So when people say to me, oh, I, I'm formed the way I am. I asked them, have you crystallized? You know, have you become a rock? Or you're, you know, what do you mean you, you are formed? Most of us, as you know, uh, the oldest part of, of any person is their bones, and that's about 10 years old. So they do renew. And our joints and our large blood vessels. And most of us is actually renewed every couple of weeks. So this notion that, oh, I'm over 50, and therefore I'm the way I am, no, that's an excuse. Right. So we really can choose health, but we need to do it comprehensively. We need to do it in the ways that people can embrace. And that's where we have specialized over these decades, starting with skepticism and ending up with real science. Absolutely. Dr. Jaffe, thank you so much for being with me today. It's always a pleasure to chat with you and laugh with you and smile with you. That's a form of medicine for us too. Laughter is the best medicine. I do agree, Melissa. And thank you so much. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Indeed. Bye-bye. Ciao.